Um, we can move on. Unless Kenny Galladay, probably. Yeah, Kenny right? Galladay. Kenny Galladay is probably the next one that I was going to get into. Kenny Galladay signed uh, with the New York Giants. This this signing kind of was out of the out of the blue for me. I, it still didn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for Reeb still to this day. Um, we said last week Bengals made a lot of sense. The Ravens made a lot of sense. The Giants make no sense to me. Four years, $72 million. I guess he wanted to be in the New York market. Fair play to him. I thought this was a lot of money, though, for Kenny Galladay. 18 mil a year. Uh, kind of crazy. But uh, the Giants did make some moves. They also added a Dory Jackson uh, for three years, $39 million a year. Uh, $39 million. So um, with those two moves, Reeb, I think uh, the Giants are slowly creeping up in the NFC East standings for me. They're still last, but they're, uh, they're definitely creeping up. And they're looking at looking to be a pretty solid team to compete in that division. Yeah, for me, what this shows is you already have James Bradbury from last free agency class, right? You have, you brought in Dory Jackson, three year, thirty nine million dollars. You're trying to solidify that other cornerback two spot from the whole DeAndre Baker saga that happened with him apparently robbing someone. I think those charges are dropped, but still, they ended up cutting former first round pick DeAndre Baker, right? So now. You have Logan Ryan as well, who they brought in. You have Jabril Peppers. You have Xavier McKinney, who didn't see, I think, any snaps. Or I think he, 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 play, I think he played the end of the year. I think he got a pick against the Giants, I think, the last week or week 16 it was. Uh, against the uh, Cowboys, I mean. So that guy, he was hurt. Darnay Holmes is another corner I really, like, I really liked out of UCLA. So I like their secondary, right? Going to their defensive front, they brought back Leonard Williams. They did lose long time tacker a uh, long time defensive tackle Dalvin Tomlinson they still have Dexter Lawrence BJ Hill honestly all they need to really improve is i guess maybe a linebacker position they do have Blake Martinez and uh, i guess and maybe they just in the draft yeah and you got to go, you got to go after edge in the draft right so you, right now your defense is really good i think if you are the the New York Giants i mean they beat Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, and they were starting Colt McCoy at quarterback. So say what you would you say what you will about uh, Colt McCoy, but I don't think he's by any means a type of quarterback who's going to one v one against Russell Wilson and win. I, I, like it, I just it just match props yeah. to this defense. Second of all, you already have I think a really good culture that was established by Joe Judge last season. They only won six games, but I think you established that hard sort of blue collar mentality that you'd like to see for your team, grinding it out. I mean, they had Daniel Jones t- like getting hit live in practice, which is something that never happens in the NFL. But I think I, li- I really like the mentality that he's instilled, sort of the Patriots' work ethic. Obviously, that hasn't really worked elsewhere other than New England, but I like that they've built some sort of foundation there. I think the players want to play for him, which is what's important, right? Now, an offensively, you're getting Saquon back. You have Sterling Shepard, who's a turn tie for a long time deal. You have Darius Slain. You have Emin Ingram. Honestly, your offensive line, I like Shane Lemieux out of, I think, Oregon. He played alongside with this year's presumptive number one uh, tackle in, what's his face? Pene Sewell. Um, you have Will Hernandez. All the, uh, Lane, Lane Solder, I mean, he's kind of garbage, I'll be honest. Overpaid, but still. They I think drafted released, Andrew Thomas. They drafted Andrew Thomas, right? So I think you need help on the offensive line. But from the weapons spot, I really like what you did. Kenny Galladay is a phenomenal jump ball wide receiver. You have some deeper threats sort of in Darius Slane, Sterling Shepard. You brought in John Ross as well to be a speedster, right? This long tangent is what I'm coming to here is it's all up to Daniel Jones. Exactly. Like, I think I think this New York Giants team is very underrated, and I think it has a chance to win the division. And hell, if they if the, if the, co- the players buy in, if you got good quarterback play, this team could maybe even win double-digit games, right? Like right. I've seen crazier things happen. But it all comes down to Danny Dimes. Will Danny Dimes be Danny Dimes, or will he crumble underneath the pressure and become Danny Pennies? Because if he does not, if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't produce, He's this team will not. Game. This team, I mean, they'll, they'll be a decent team. But the way I say it is, just, it's just going to be another Chicago Bears situation, though not to that extent. Where you have a phenomenal defense, you have a phenomenal team around you. It's just you failed because the quarterback wasn't enough. And if Daniel Jones fails here then I think it's going to be a Mitch Trubisky situation all over again. You're going to move on and try to find your new quarterback of the future. And I just got to hope that the, the Giants are more successful at that than the Bears have been. 
I think I think it's even more than that. I think it's even more than the Mitch Trubisky situation. I think Daniel Daniel Jones is in the perfect situation to succeed, more so than Mitch, because Mitch, I guess, the excuse there is O line, but even here O line, I think they have a pretty decent O line now. Yeah, they still have some holes to say, so I, I guess their only need is O line. But more importantly, they need Daniel Jones to play, and if he can play well and he can play to where they drafted him, which was what sixth pick, if he can play to that level, I think uh, there's no problem. Uh, with the Giants, and I can say this: if if he plays uh, plays well and plays, uh, let's say to even the level of let's say Baker Mayfield played at, um, if he does that level, I think uh, this Giants team can go double digit wins for sure because that defense is really good. If they can shut down Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf for a game, I I, I think that that's a very explosive offense. I think. They can hold their ground against probably 38, the, the majority of the teams in the NFL and uh, definitely every single team in the NFC East. So I think this is can be a very dangerous team, can be a playoff contender if uh, Daniel Jones, of course, plays well. And Daniel Jones can be the Josh Allen this year. Who knows? We've seen crazier things happen. We've seen Carson Palmer pop off in random years. We've seen... Josh Allen this year, people expected him to be a, to rise, like, but not this heavy of a rise. I mean, anything can happen. So uh, definitely want to keep an eye out on that.